This is the talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi Satsang, a time to listen, reflect, and deeply meditate. Know yourself and be always free and at peace. Welcome. I'm Richard Clark, hosting this satsang. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. This is from Talk 29, which is on discrimination and grace. Some visitors had come from Kadalore. A sub judge, accompanied by two elderly ladies, was among them. The sub judge began the discussion as to the impermanence of all mundane things by putting the question Has the discrimination between reality and unreality the efficacy in itself to lead us to the realization? of the one imperishable. Ramana replied, as propounded by all and realized by all true seekers, fixity in the Supreme Spirit alone can make us know and realize it. It being of us and in us any amount of discrimination can lead us only one step forward by making us renouncers, by goading us to discard the seeming as transitory and hold fast to the eternal truth and presence alone. The conversation turned upon the question as to whether Isvara Prasad, divine grace, is necessary for the attaining of Samraja, universal dominion, or whether Ajiva's honest and strenuous efforts to attain it cannot of themselves lead him to that from which there is no return to life and death. The Maharshi responded, Divine grace is essential for realization. It leads one to God-realization. But such grace is vouchsafed only to him who is a true devotee or a yogin, who has striven hard and ceaselessly on the path towards freedom. The disciple says, It is said that divine grace is necessary to attain successful, undistracted mind, samadhi. Is that so? The Maharshi replies, We are God, Isvara. Isvara drishti, that is, seeing ourselves as God, is itself divine grace. So we need divine grace to get God's grace. The disciple asks, Is not the master's grace the result of God's grace? The Maharshi replies, Why distinguish between the two? The master is the same as God and not different from him. The devotee says, when an endeavor is made to lead the right life and to concentrate thought on the self, there is often a downfall and a break. What is to be done? The Maharshi replies, it will come all right in the end, there is the steady impulse of your determination that sets your feet, sets you on your feet again after every downfall and breakdown. Gradually, the obstacles are all overcome. 
and your current becomes stronger. Everything comes right in the end. Steady determination is what is required. Ramana says, fixity in the Supreme Self alone can make us know and realize it. It being of us and in us, any amount of discrimination can lead us only one step forward by making us renouncers, by goading us to discard the seeming as transitory and hold fast to the eternal truth and presence alone. The practice that brings self-realization is knowledge, not conceptual mental knowledge, but the deep self-knowledge that comes from knowing and being the self, what Ramana calls the Supreme Spirit. Only the self can know the self. And how can the self not know the self, which is its very existence, its very being? How can the not self know the self, since the not self has no real existence? The fixity that Ramana says is essential is not to some idea of a Supreme Spirit, but towards the reality. This reality is existence, consciousness itself. Here, fixity is dwelling in and as the awareness, instead of as and within the objects of awareness. Who am I? I am that which knows. Be this knower instead of holding on to things that are known. Discrimination is a practice, a step in the direction of this knowledge. Practices are something you do. This knowledge is something you are. Discrimination removes from your sense of identity anything that is impermanent, that is created, anything that is known objectively. As we discriminate, our focus becomes more internal towards what we see is there even when everything else that is discriminated out is eliminated from the idea of ourself. Discrimination shows us that we are not anything that can be dismissed. Rather, who we are cannot be eliminated since it's always there. Self-knowledge shows us thou art that, that our identity and the identity of everything is the same, that we are what we are seeking. Self-knowledge is the direct immediate knowledge of this non-difference. We are that. Hold fast to this. It's all about identity. What do you take yourself to be? Then when asked whether a jiva's honest and strenuous efforts to attain it cannot of themselves leading to that from whence is no return to life and death, Ramana declares, divine grace 
is essential for realization. It leads one to God realization. But such grace is vouchsafed only to him who is a true devotee or a yogin who has striven hard and ceaselessly on the path towards freedom. Ramana continues about grace. We are God, Isvara, Isvara Drishti, that is seeing ourself as God, is it self-divine grace. So we need divine grace to get God's grace. Grace is the gift of the universe. It is the gift of existence. It is the gift of awareness. This gift is the substratum upon which everything else exists. We might feel that we have been given this grace, but we are grace itself. Ramana says, it is not practice, but grace bringing realization. It's not what you do, but who you are and your very awareness. Practice has a role, but as long as your identity is as the one who practices, you remain as this practitioner. The idea of being the one who practices limits your ability to actually dive into the practice and just be who you are and to know that you are. So what is needed is grace, the grace of God. But you and God are not different. So why look for something outside yourself? Grace flows from within. It is who you are, not something different. And then when asked when an endeavor is made to lead the right life and to concentrate thought on the self, there's often a downfall and break. What is to be done? Ramana says, it will come all right in the end. There is the steady impulse of your determination that sets you on your feet again after every downfall and breakdown. Gradually, the obstacles are all overcome and your current becomes stronger. Everything comes right in the end. Steady determination is what is required. Just relax and trust. Your internal desire for inner peace will continue to bring growth. The natural direction of life is towards wholeness. Seeing that happiness comes from within, you will continue this inner quest. It will come all right in the end. Now we'll hear from my, my teacher, Nomi, with a discourse, as you ever are. That which we truly are, we are always. Therefore, to realize the absolute reality or supreme truth 
Sri Bhagavan said that one should know oneself. And Upanishad, as well as Adi Shankara, have said that if it is Jiva, it is always Jiva. If it is Shiva, it is always Shiva. What is the yit referred to? Our very existence. If the existence is truly individualized and consequently limited or bound, then it should always be so. But if in truth it is the absolute, Shiva, then it is always so. To know your own existence as it is, this is essential. Self-realization does not produce a new existence, but reveals that which already is the case, the truth regarding your own self. What is true always about your being? Certainly it cannot be the body. Body has birth, change, death, motion, etc. These are not always existing. But you always exist. What is the nature of this existence? This existence which is truly yourself. If you are not the body, then everything that pertains to the body does not define, does not bind, does not pertain to you. Whether it is birth or death, attributes or activities, time, space, etc. What is the existence in you that is ever transcendent of the body and its characteristics? Inquire within yourself. What is the ever-existent? Can it be the mind with its states, waking, dreaming, deep sleep, its various modes and conditions, its innumerable thoughts? None of that is ever existent. What is the ever existent within you? You exist and you exist without any interruption. Always you are. It is impossible even to conceive of not existing without assuming your existence to conceive it. What is this doubtless ever existent being? It's not a body. It is not a mind. And none of the limitations of a body or a mind pertain to it. Is it the individuality? If the sense, really the assumption of individuality, is something that rises and disappears again, 
It is not the ever-existent. That which you are, truly, you always are. You cannot truly be an individual at one point, an ego, and not at another. Whether you're considering changes of states of mind or bondage and liberation. Liberation being defined as the egoless state. Then what one finds in liberation or self-realization as we call it is what is always true about our very being and not a new attainment. As the marsh she advises, put the question to yourself, who am I? Direct your inquiry to your very existence. And if it is seemingly individualized, determine who truly is there. What is actually existent? Abandoning any tendency to misidentify with the mind or the body, what marks off an individual? Trace the sense of I to its essential existence. What actually is there? Any notion of bondage or limitation is based upon the individual and is therefore entirely illusory. Who is the individual? What is the significance of I? Suffering is the result of the belief that illusory bondage is true. The bondage is only ignorance. The ignorance is merely misidentification. And all the forms of misidentification rest upon a single assumption, I. To inquire who am I and realize that which is ever true about yourself is liberation from all of the imagined bondage. And it is great bliss, free of the potential of suffering. In Gaudapada's Karika, there is a verse, verse 32 of chapter 2. Listen to what he says regarding the supreme truth, the Paramartata. He begins by saying, Nanarodha. There is no cessation. There is no stoppage, no destruction. Of what is there no destruction? Of your existence. It is imperishable. There is also no destruction of the ego because it is not true. He continues by saying, Nacha Utpatanya Upati. There is no origination, no birth. That is, your real nature, indestructible, has no beginning. And the ego also has no beginning. It never came to be. 
It is this false assumption assumed by no one. It is not the reality. He continues, Nabado, Nabadaha. There is no one bound. Search your own nature. The Maharshi says, if an inquiry is made into the one who seems as if bound, that itself is release. Bondage is only misidentification. Misidentification is only the notion I. Who is this I? If an inquiry is made within yourself, you will find no one bound. He says, Nacha and not uh, Sadaka. There is no one practicing. What then is the power of practice? It is the power of Brahman, the real self. The individual who is dissolved by it has nothing to do with it. Namamukshu, no one desiring liberation or aspiring for liberation. What is the power that aspires? Holding your true self. But the true self is in no need of liberation. It is already the perfect fullness. So he says, no one aspiring for liberation. The individual has no part in it. Then he says, vai, which indicates certainty. Mukta, liberated one. There is no such thing as a liberated individual. Liberation is freedom from the individual. So there is no beginning, no end, no one bound, no one practicing, no one aspiring for liberation, no one liberated. He says, Itiesha, thus, this is Paramatta, the absolute truth, the supreme truth. That supreme truth is the very nature of our existence. You have not been born and your ego has never actually come to be. Find this out by inquiry. You will not die. Your existence is imperishable. As for the ego, it never has even appeared. So how could it disappear? You are not bound now, nor have you been bound in the past. The bound individual is entirely imagined. Your existence, though, is always beyond such imagination. Find out the nature of your existence. No one practicing practices the dissolution of the individual, the destruction of the ego. The call of yourself is to yourself. Such is the desire for liberation. The individual has no part in it, for the individual is unreal. The unreal has no part in the real. The unreal never comes to be. The real ever is. Those who realize such are declared to be realized or liberated. But there is no such corresponding individual. In this realization, absolute being is the knowledge. The truth comprehends itself. It is absolute. 
not in relation to anything else. It is non-dual, which means that there is no alternative to it. All right. I've said enough for now. As a reminder, as a hint of the general direction, dive within yourself and know yourself as you are, what you always are. That itself is the absolute Brahman. Inquire, who am I? And now we'll have a short inquiry. Notice that you exist and you know that you exist. Like this, know yourself. And inquire, investigate within yourself. What comes and goes? What is temporary? Transient? And what is not? What's always there? What's always present? Dive into this that is always. Who am I? What is the nature of my existence? What exists? All right. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om, peace, peace, peace. Thank you for joining me for this Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi Satsang. Look for the next episode in a few days. Namaste. Namaste.